All right. I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, Random Lake, Wisconsin. Uh, the internet here went completely in the toilet right at 9 a.m., right when I was going to start recording. Um, so I'm recording, and I have no idea if the stream's going to work. I'll probably end up replacing it with the recording itself um, once we're done. So if you're able to hear and listen to this, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'll, I'll repost it here later this morning, and uh, you can join us then. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our memory verse for this week, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. Our psalm for today is Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you, you are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, insolent men have risen up against me, a band of ruthless men seek my life and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor, that those who hate me may see and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 37. Then Isaiah the son of Amoz sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word which the Lord has spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, has despised you, laughed you to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head behind your back. Whom have you reproached and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. But your servants have you have reproached. By your servants you have reproached the Lord and said, By the multitude of my chariots I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the limits of Lebanon. I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees. I will enter its farthest height to its fruitful forest. I have dug and drunk water, and with the soles of my feet I have dried up all the brooks of defense. Did you not hear long ago how I made it? 
from ancient times that I formed it, now I have brought it to pass. That you should be for crush, crushing fortified cities into heaps of ruins. Therefore their inhabitants had little power, they were dismayed and confounded, they were as the grass of the field and the green herb as the grass of the housetops and grain blighted before it is grown. But I know your dwelling place, your going out and your coming in, and your rage against me, because your rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears, therefore I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way which you came. This shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year such as grows of itself, and the second year what springs from the same. Also in the third year sow and reap, plant vineyards, and eat the fruit of them. And the remnant who have escaped from the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant, and those who escape from Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, will do this. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor build a siege mound against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. And he shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of those Assyrian, of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were corpses, all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home, and remained at Nineveh. There ends the reading. Now a reading for our catechesis from Matthew chapter 14. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. There ends the reading for our catechesis. God willing, you can still hear me. Um, I would be surprised if you can see me at all. All right. Um, How did Jesus respond when he saw the multitudes who had come out to him? See this in verse 14. Yeah, he was moved with compassion and healed their sick. Now what happened at evening? Yeah, the disciples came and told Jesus to send the crowds away so that they could buy food in the villages. What other important events happened in the evening? Especially in Matthew's Gospel. I think this points forward. To in the evening was the Passover, right? And the institution of the Lord's Supper at the beginning of the Passover day that concluded with his burial, right? Remember, according to the Jewish reckoning of time, evening and morning was, is a day, right? So the evening is the beginning of the day. What did Jesus say in response? Yeah, he told them that they didn't need to worry about what they would eat, or drink, right? In so many words. Um, This, of course, is what he also said back at the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, right? Um, Look at the birds of the heavens. They neither worry nor gather into barns, right? 
Now what food did the disciples have? They had five loaves and two fish. What did Jesus command the crowd to do? Sit down on the grass. That's right. Now what should this remind us? Sheep in the pasture. Ah, you're thinking Psalm 23. What did Jesus do with the bread? He took it, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples to give. Of course, what does this remind us of? Matthew 26. That's right, the actions of the Lord's Supper. What happened when the people finished eating and were filled? See this in verse 20. That's right, the disciples gathered up 12 baskets full of fragments. So how many were fed that day? About 5,000 men besides their women and children. Meditation on this text. The good shepherd looks upon his sheep in compassion and desires to heal and to feed their bodies. The love of Jesus is not just an abstract or emotional love, but a love that desires to bring life to the body and soul. The number 5,000 reminds us that Jesus is the complete fulfillment of the books of Moses. He is the prophet that God had promised through his servant Moses. Here, Jesus feeds the people just as God had fed Israel manna through his servant Moses when they were in the wilderness. In Israel, they could not gather enough to have leftovers except for the Sabbath, but now they gather the leftovers because the perfect Sabbath has come. He feeds them only the bread because he points us to the better bread that he offers to us in the Lord's Supper. This is the bread that will not spoil just as the body of Christ did not suffer corruption. This bread will rescue our bodies from all corruption. All right, we confess the office of the keys. What is the office of the keys? The office of the keys is that special authority which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. Where is this written? This is what St. John the Evangelist writes in chapter 20. The Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What do you believe according to these words? I believe that when the called ministers of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation and absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better, this is just as valid and certain even in heaven as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. We pray. O Lord Jesus, you gave the gift of the Holy Spirit to your disciples and promised that if they forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. And if they do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Grant us to believe your promise so that we receive the ministry of our pastors with repentant faith and with the confidence that they are speaking on your behalf and for the sake of our soul's salvation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of the office of the Holy Ministry. Give faithfulness to my pastor as he calls me to repentance and faith in your Son. Strengthen me to believe that when my pastor deals with me according to Christ's divine command, whether he excludes me from the Lord's Supper for a time in order to call me to repentance, or absolves me when by the grace of God I repent of my sins and want to do better, that this is just as valid and certain even in heaven as if Christ, my dear Lord, dealt with me himself. Through the same Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We pray today for faithfulness to the end, for the renewal of those who are withering in the faith or have fallen away, for pastors as they prepare to administer Christ's holy gifts, and for receptive hearts and minds on the Lord's day. We pray for our first responders, doctors, nurses, and all those who work in nursing homes and hospitals. We pray for an end to anxious thoughts and constant worry, that God would provide peace and joy in all circumstances. We pray for deliverance from pestilence, sedition, and rebellion. We pray for our military personnel. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Pray today also um, for, in Thanksgiving for healing given to Barb Kahn and for the years of service that you granted to St. John by our teacher and administrator, Cassie Mackla. Pray for those who are ill and in need of our prayers. Marcella, Jan, David, Brad, Janet, Carol, Sandy, and Linda, Joan, Ken, and Aaron. We pray especially this morning for my aunt, Carol Hawk, um, whose condition has worsened and the family is in discussion with her as to what the best course of action is going to be for her. We pray for those who are grieving, especially Ruth McKenna at the death of her sister, Marion. Those who are isolated at home, Willis and Janice, Mickey and Bev, and for our missionaries, the Federowitz family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Pray the collect for today. O God, you have prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I'm going to read the hymn for today. Come follow me, the Savior spake, all in my way abiding. Deny yourselves, the world forsake. Obey my call and guiding. O bear the cross, whate'er betide. Take my example for your guide. I am the light, I light the way a godly life displaying. I bid you walk as in the day. I keep your feet from straying. I am the way, and well I show how you must sojourn here below. My heart abounds in lowliness. My soul with love is glowing. And gracious words my lips express with meekness overflowing. My heart, my mind, my strength, my all, to God I yield on him I call. I teach you how to shun and flee what harms your soul's salvation, your heart from every guile to free from sin and its temptation. I am the refuge of the soul and lead you to your heavenly goal. Then let us follow Christ our Lord and take the cross appointed and firmly clinging to his word in suffering be undaunted. For those who bear the battle strain, the crown of heavenly life, obtain. There ends our devotion for today. Uh, apologies for the internet. I suppose I can, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just like Wednesday night where it just got really bad. Uh, it's terrible this morning. Um, only about 7% of my video has made it through, according to the computer, which is incredible. Uh, but it's recorded, and so uh, I'll probably end up just reposting this today, and then you can catch up um, if you weren't able to watch. So, Lord be with you all, and God willing, you'll be able to watch us live streaming tomorrow, or better yet, join us in person. Lord be with you all.